Okay. Smith has just announced the new revolver in 350 Legend. Now, 350 Legend, for those that don't know, is a rifle bullet. I mean, it's mostly used in an AR type platform. If you look at Wilson Combat, Wilson Combat offers the AR type rifle in like 20 different calibers. That is one of them. We have a seven and a half inch barrel with a compensator and moon clips. And you check it out on the Instagram or YouTube or the official website. It's about, it costs about 16. It's not bad. Now, I personally think things are getting out of control. Now, that does not mean we need a new federal law. That does not mean we need a new state law. That does not mean we need to have, you know, Micah Bloomberg or Shannon Watts and other cocksuckers coming around. But I think we need to just start toning down what we're doing. And I'm going to justify that. We should start policing ourselves, so to speak. Okay, when I went to the rifle range with the Mini 14 for the first time, I had been there previously with that piece of shit um, uh, carbine. Yeah. The instructor said, do me a favor, push the target down further. So I pushed down to the very end of the, the range. He said, I don't want you to hit the, the uh, rig. What's the rig? $6,000. Okay. Now, the guy next to me who was shooting the AR platform, who actually liked my rifle, he went out by himself. Yeah, I know, right? He was telling us about his friend with the shockwave. Now, the shockwave, for those that don't know, Rem Remington and Mossberg both have a semi-auto and pump variation of a, shock, of a shotgun. The most popular is the Mossberg pump, which is the shockwave. It has a 14-inch barrel. If you put a buttstock on it, it's a short barrel shotgun. If you put a pistol grip on it, it's a handgun. If you put the um, arm brace on it, it's only legal in certain states after that. Be careful. But as it sits with this bird's head type thing with grip on it, it's an other. So it skates past the ATF for now. You know, five years from now when we're living in the gulags, yeah. But for now. And it has a strap on the end of it because it's hard to control. His friend blew his fingers off with that. And then a minute later, the instructor was telling us about a guy with a 460 Magnum. Now, I don't know what type it was, Smith, Taurus, what type of barrel it was, this barrel, that barrel, what type of load he had in it. The 460 can shoot Long Colt, Casol, and 460, right? He was shooting, and when you shoot the 460, you have bang, recoil, recover, no, bang, Recoil, recover. Bang, recoil, recover. In between bang, recoil, recover. I don't know if his finger went back into the trigger guard or if he didn't release the trigger, okay? But somehow the trigger went off in between recoil and recovery. And when it's at a 40 degree angle, boom, okay? Knock the rigging down. Another incident was also with the shockwave. I come down to the range a year later, and the guy at the counter says, wait a few minutes, this is the rifle range again. We had a problem. A guy came with his girlfriend, and the girlfriend said, I'm not going to shoot, I'm going to just watch. Okay, watching is free. All right. He takes out the Mossberg shockwave. The range director tells him, now keep this in mind, the company is owned by a husband and wife, okay? They have shop at ground level, classrooms, top side, and range in basement. The range director works for the married couple. However, as range director, he is literally God himself, okay? He has the power to throw his own boss off the range. That's how powerful he is as a person, okay? And he tells the guy, you... And you alone and no one but you will shoot this gun. Okay? You know where this is going. I said it once before, I think, in one of the videos. But if you didn't know, you obviously know. So, he waits for the girl. You know, one second, everyone turns around for some reason. Knows, and he hands the girl from the shockwave. And as they turn back and see her, it's too late. 
Now, if she had been shooting like a 1022 or some shit, they would have said, listen, go outside, pay, and come back in after you pay. Don't do this again, okay? But because she was a, wit a watcher, not a shooter, for free, and because she's shooting the gun that he told no one to shoot, he gives, him, he gives her the gun, she fires it, she blows the rig off, okay? Range director says, okay, you owe me $6,000 and you're banned for life. Get out. Okay. And Barry and Eric and later Eric and Chad told us all the stories about the guy with the girlfriend. Uh, we've all seen the video. You know, you have this girlfriend who's like 4 foot 11, 85 pounds, never shot in her life. And you give her the 500 Magnum with a fucking Buffalo Boar, supercharged, ultra mags. Okay. And what happens? Well, he takes a picture of her ass jiggling as the gun goes off, or her boobs jiggling as the gun goes off. But in reality, she either gets carpal tunnel, breaks her wrist, breaks her nose, or knocks her teeth out of her mouth. That's what happens. It's true. And Eric, who was the, who was the ultimate Second Amendment lunatic, has said that these guys who put in jail now think about this for a minute. Eric believes that you should have machine guns mailed to your house, okay? Eric believes you should have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on your truck when you drive around, okay? So when Eric says you should go to jail for your behavior, you're sick fuck, okay? Um, and we've seen you know, some states allow people to have machine guns if the machine gun is made before May 19th, 1986, and if they have thousands of dollars and if they rent with ATF. Some states allow FFLs to buy brand new machine guns, keep it at their range, and allow their customers to shoot it under their supervision. A nine-year-old girl had an Uzi submachine gun, which is usually a nine millimeter, right? Okay. She lost control of it and killed the instructor. Now, normally a 9mm is not a big deal. It's not that powerful as far as recoil is concerned. But give it to a 9-year-old girl and put it on full auto, okay, the eve. All right? Now, even when I started shooting, the range instructor, the, the, the instructor that taught me, retired police instructor, my mother had seen him at a police function for active and retirees. He said, you know what, tell you something to come to the range this weekend. I'll meet him there and we'll work out it. Okay, we'll do the shoot. And my very first video ever on YouTube, I had a cell phone. I thought I took a picture, but I took a video and I blew it on YouTube to test it out. They took a five shot target, you know, targets in all four corners, target in the center, and they put the sticker target on it, so the bulls on top of the bull, okay. And they handed me the J frame aluminum airway bullshit, my breath was using it, it my breath was gone. Four shots, bang, bang, bang. Fifth shot, dead center. You sort of told me, that's a fluke. That gun is 10 years away for you. I still don't own it. Okay, 15 years later, I still don't own it. He told me you need a medium frame revolver, 38 or Magnum, and at the range, you only shoot 38. You can't shoot Magnum at the range. So you can shoot Magnum out of You can shoot 38 special. I have a Magnum revolver. You know that, right? He said, you need to control it. You got to do this. And he whipped out his one of his guns, his backup gun, his pocket holster. He had a Magnum J frame. He said, when I shoot this with Magnums, my arm hurts. Then I heard another story where a few months later, maybe a year later, my FFL son, who was a Marine and cop, when he was requalifying on his backup gun, which is a Magnum ultra light bullshit, okay? He couldn't sign his name afterwards, okay? Now me personally, when a Magnum bullet goes off, my hearing is so good, and I literally cringe. I cannot hear a Magnum bullet go off. So when it came to me to buy a revolver, I didn't buy a Magnum. I bought the governor because A, I already have ACP, so I don't need new ammo. B, it's not Magnum, so I can hear it better, okay? You can shoot a 10 gauge next to me, you can shoot a three-way next to me, doesn't bother me. But the Magnum bullet piercing the sound, breaking the sound barrier, it bothers my ear. So I know my own limitations, okay? And there are people that say, I don't like that gun because it's too big for me. 
I don't think I'm just, I can't hold my hand. That gun's not for me. I gotta use something different. Okay, we're all different. Okay, we're all the same. Okay, not everybody can drive a, a V8 sports car. Not everybody can ride a motorcycle. We're all different. No shame in that. Okay, there are things that I can use that no one else can. Fine. There are things that everyone else can do that I can't. Fine. We know our limits. Now, guys like Jay Michelak, Bill Wilson, Ken Hackathon, Larry Vickers, okay, Eric and Chad, those guys, they know physically how to hold the gun. They know when their limits pass, okay? I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about these fucking idiot dumbasses that are on their first gun and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I'll give you another example. There was a guy, a lesser known guy, who had a 460 Magnum on YouTube. And he was telling me, telling the video a story. He's at the range. The guy has a Nighthawk Custom 1911, which is like a $4,000 bullet. Yeah, okay. You shoot mine, I'll shoot yours. Okay, cool. The guy takes, he, he takes the guy's 1911. The guy takes his 460 Magnum. He puts the thumb and the finger, whatever, over the cylinder. Now, when you put your fingers over a cylinder or a revolver, what happens? You get burned. When you put your finger over the cylinder of a 460 Magnum, what happens? The finger is blown off entirely. Okay? And he grabbed the guy and said, wait, 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 before the guy went too far. Okay? And I don't believe FFLs are selling guns at the back door without a background check. I don't believe that. Liberals believe that at all. I do believe that some FFLs will just say, listen, you pass the background and here's the gun. Okay? Some FFLs don't ask questions. Some do. Barry did, Eric did, Eric and Chad are no longer FFLs, they're now media personalities. Some instructors may say, wait, that's too much for you. You shouldn't do something different, okay? That's fine. But what about some amateur idiot that thinks he's fucking all that hot shit, okay? And you give him, you know, a 460 or 500, and now we got the 450 legend. He's going to hurt himself or someone else. Now, Ken Hackathorn. Ken Hackathorn is a historian, collector. He's designed a couple of variants for Wilson Combat 1911 Ember Beretta platform. He's a Green Beret. He's over 80. He's got decades of experience with guns. And he was saying that many, many, many years ago, when he was my age, he would be shooting ACP and 44 Magnum on a daily basis. And the next morning, he couldn't hold the spoon eat his breakfast, okay? And this is a Green Beret, a collector, an instructor, a designer, someone who's been in the industry for years, okay? And now that he's older, he's having even more problems with his body physically. Okay, that could be a combination of age plus abuse of the body. Ken Hackathorn makes a couple of 1911s for Wilson Combat, you can actually buy, they're called the Hackathorn Special. He made a couple in 45 ACP, he can carry them, but he also made a couple of 9mm, yeah, I know I hate 9mm 1911s, ill, right? But he bought a couple of 9mm 1911s to shoot with. So he'll carry an ACP 1911 and shoot a 9mm 1911 because the recoil is more controllable and his body has been abused over time. So if you have someone, his magnitude, his, his experience, who is abused by... ACPs and Magnums, okay? And even Rob Latham, who is a, a world class shooter in his own right, he says he has a hard time with ACP after a while. It starts to weigh you down. Okay, I never had that problem really, but I'm not shooting 100,000 rounds a month. So if these guys are having these problems, what about you? You who are less experienced than they are, you who know nothing, okay? I think that maybe we should start toning down. It's like, before you ask yourself if you could, did you ask yourself if you should? Okay, I think some of these guns get out of control. Maybe there should be a warning label on the, on the gun box. Maybe there should be a warning video like I'm doing now only by the actual companies to say, wait a minute. This gun is only intended for highly trained professionals, okay? You, the amateur, should not use this. We recommend X number of years of shooting before you buy this gun. Maybe the FFL 
after the background check works out, before the guy buys the gun, he has to say, how long have you been shooting? Only six months, a day, my first gun. How many guns you own? How many variants have you shot? Mm -hmm. Okay, because if a guy has never had a gun in his life, or if he just bought one gun a month ago, maybe he shouldn't be buying a 350 Legend or a 500 Magnum or a Desert Eagle. Okay. And Barry and Eric have had nightmare stories. There was one guy that had a Desert Eagle. We called into his head and killed him. One guy, Barry, saw this guy. And Barry's been dead for a couple of years now, so this is a couple of years ago. The guy had a 12-gauge shotgun with a pistol grip. And he went like this with it. And when he recoiled, he left on a gurney. Okay? People don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they get themselves hurt. I'm not afraid of, you know, Barry and Eric or, or Barry's gang of rest his soul. I'm not afraid of Chad and Eric, I should say. I'm not afraid of Rob Latham or, or Ken Hapkathorn or Bill Wilson or Valley Vickers. I'm not afraid of these guys because they know exactly what they're doing, okay? Physically, they know how to hold their body. Mentally, they also know how many, I've shot so many bullets today, I'm gonna put the gun away. Especially when I have a gun that costs, you know, $5 a round, okay? Especially when I have a gun that weighs more than I do, okay? Now, here's the problem with these Juganda fucking revolvers. When you shoot a handgun, in particular a revolver, you have two points of contact, which are here. These hands. Bang, 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 bang. Okay. Bang. Okay. Two points of contact here. Or maybe every once in a while you have a, you, a bench rest or you lean over a bag. By the way, when I shot the revolver, the J-frame, I was leaning on a bag. Yeah, I was. Anyway, long story short, when you shoot a rifle, yes, the barrel is at least 16 inches, unless you have ATF permission, mm -hmm. but yes, the barrel is longer, which contributes to more muzzle velocity, more power, yeah, 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 yeah. But when the barrel is longer, one arm, your dominant, your weak arm is here, I'm at a bad angle, your dominant arm is at the front of the gun, where the where the barrel is and where the handguard is, okay, your your dominant arm is here where the the bolt is, where the trigger is, where the buttstock is, okay, and your shoulder of your dominant arm is here for three points of contact, and your upper body is absorbing the recoil, boom, so it's more controllable. You still need to know what you're doing, but it's more controllable. Or you may have a bench rest or a vice, or I've seen so many different contraptions where you put the gun into this, or you may lay down and be laying prone and have the the gun into your shoulder, three points of contact, plus the plus the, a part of the gun resting on the ground, plus your elbow resting on the ground, maybe, plus a, a, some kind of stand or tripod or bipod, okay? So that will distribute the weight more evenly Okay, so it'll be easy for you to control, but like I said, you still need to have experience, okay? You can't shoot a three in a win mag right away. You can't shoot a 50 caliber you know, BMG right away, okay? Three feet of a Pua, all, right, all these crazy fucking calibers, okay? You have to, in fact, there's a gun, a T-Rex gun, that's just a fucking mini artillery shell. It's literally a mini artillery shell. Like $5,000 waiting list on the bullshit, but yeah. But at least between two points of contact with your arms, one point with your shoulder, upper body, possibly a tripod, a bipod, or, or, or a stand, or a rest, or a sandbag. Yeah, that's better. But when you take this fucking revolver, and you go like this with it, boom, okay? The shorter barrel is going to have higher muzzle flip than... Uh, 18 or 20 inch rifle. Yes, it has a compensator, but still, it's still gonna come a little bit. Okay, 
the fact that you're holding with your hands, not with your, your shoulder and your arm and all that other bullshit, it means you're going to have more weight on your wrist and your elbows, okay? It's going to knock you back further physically. You may lose control of it and have a, a double shot, okay? Boom, boom. Okay, which is not going to be good if you're out in the wilderness hunting, hunting game. Because you may be in the woods by yourself. And if you knock yourself in the mouth or fall backwards or fall over, there might not be anybody around to call the paramedics, whereas opposed to you're at the range, there's other guys around you. Including instructors. They tell you, whatever you're going to end fucking, okay? Because I think we got to slow ourselves down with this shit. Or at least put some kind of disclaimer saying, listen, man. This gun is highly dangerous. This is not an amateur gun. If you're an amateur, don't use it. And if I were a line instructor and I saw a guy who had a big fucking revolver, look what I got, I got a flat line. I would ask the guy, how long have you been shooting? My first gun. Okay, do me a favor. Don't shoot it. Go, go shoot it somewhere else. Be fuck, I don't want to fucking die with this shit. It's the truth. Let me know what you think.